Welcome to OBR Podcasts. So um, we're following up on a really exciting debate that we had here at uh, OBR Bay on um, basically on the use of genetically modified foods, both in the food supply and agriculture. And um, I'm here with John Hammer from Monsanto Growth Ventures and Anthony Evans from the Glowing Plant Project here in Berkeley. I just wanted to follow up by asking you guys a couple uh, questions mm -hmm. um, arising from the debate. And so one theme that really came up was that there seems to be a large lack of trust in the public. Um, I think that science in general is, is probably fair to say, but especially as it results to GM foods. Um, and I'm wondering from both of you, actually, I'd like to hear, how do we restore that trust? How do we um, basically initiate sort of a PR campaign to get people um, confident in GM foods and, and not kind of suspicious that it's coming from companies? And how do we repair the image? And, John, maybe you could start. Yeah, so, so, you know, clearly education is really important and, and talking about food and talking about food production. So, you know, people will criticize Michael Poulin, but he got people very interested in where their food comes from and how it's grown and where it comes from. And so there's a lot more literature there. And I, I think more people talking about where food comes from and what it takes to produce food is going to be really important. People have gotten interested in science. You know, so um, people are beginning to understand that, that scientists have a lot to offer us about how, how the environment is changing, what's changing in our environment, how do we make production of everything more sustainable, including food. And people are becoming acutely aware of the fact that the world's getting to 9 billion people. Um, and I think helping the public just become more and more aware of that. So meeting with groups here, students, these kinds of events are, are really informative. It's not just, you know, going to Congress or going here and there. People are so much more connected now through the internet, through social media. How, how can we just, it's going to be a constant conversation. And so groups like yours that are bringing together, you know, diverse people with diverse opinions, diverse ideas, diverse backgrounds to talk about issues like this is, we just got to see more of it. So yeah. hopefully more people follow your example. Oh. Um, that's good. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I think obviously we've got a branding issue. Um, I think, you know, what I, I love when, what uh, Coca Cola did with the plant plastic. They took something that, that is created through synthetic biology, which is a, a field related to genetic engineering that people really struggle with, and they rebranded it as this beautiful thing. And now it's, it's in all their, you know, the, every, if you buy Dasani water, mm -hmm. it's plant plastic. And that right, just yeah. totally became this cool thing. And so I think if we can do the same sort of thing with food, and that's kind of was some of the original goal with the Glowing Plant Project. You know, and, and you can see that we were absolutely, this is genetically engineered plant, and we're going to sell it to you. And thousands of people online wanted this. So there is a core group of people that I think you can excite around these technologies. And so I think fundamentally it's about a branding issue. Um, and the industry has not, you know, tried to create a consumer brand around genetically modified seeds. No, they just, they, mm -hmm. people like Monsanto just market to the supply chain and it's a B2B right. thing and, and we haven't created this, this forward-looking consumer side to it. So, I, you know, I think, I think there's, there may even be an opportunity for there's a startup a to do that, yeah. actually, yeah. I think, and actually try and build a brand around it and, and that could be, you know, really interesting. Genetically modified for your health. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and sell it as that, as a benefit. And, yeah. and that really could change the, you know, the, yeah. the debate, I think. Because yeah. there, are, there are a group of people who would buy that because they would see the benefits. Mm -hmm. that and would be and we're going to start to see that you know, in the developing world, as we mm -hmm. talked about here with Golden Rice and some right. of these other nutritionally enhanced products that you know, are going to meet real human needs and mm -hmm. they're going to be branded and people are going to know what they are. And, um, so maybe, like you said, um, that might have been kind of Monsanto's problem is that you don't sell seeds to people, you sell seeds the growers, growers. Yeah. right, and yeah. I and I think that's true. Our industry is, has yeah. to wake up and realize that in a highly connected world, mm -hmm. you are a B two C business. Doesn't matter what you do, mm -hmm. right? People are. If you're a large company with a large footprint and your you know, your products are understand and known by people who are out there, even though they're not directly buying your product, even though a small group of two percent farmers or whatever it is are buying yeah. your products, you know, people have to understand the technology you're using, and you know. There's been errors like this before in history, right? Where people didn't understand the technology, so it must be bad. If you think of the, you know, whether it's the world being round or the yeah. telescope or whatever it is, right? So, so helping to communicate the science is just so important. So, so, so coming back to the issue of really connecting with, with people and consumers, um, I, I specifically wanted to ask you, Anthony, uh, with respect to, um, I don't know, I don't want to make it too like cash crazy, but sort of do it yourself 
GM, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that I think you alluded to where you have people who are actually ultimately able to produce their own GM crops. And um, so that's kind of an exciting that, that's science where we fiction want to get to. idea. You know, how do I get there, basically? I mean, you know, we're selling maker kits. Right? Yeah. So we're selling a kit that allows you at home, in your garage, to genetically engineer a plant. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the near future, we should have those kits for, for local farmers, for everybody. I mean, the key problem is the regulation. You know, mm -hmm. the, the ability to do this and make it is, is becoming democratized. It's becoming something that people can do in garage labs. You're just not going to be able to sell that everywhere. So, you know, one interesting strategy that I'd like to see is just a wave of creation of these kind of things. You know, if people could create a thousand of these and release them to the market at the same time, that could change the debate. And especially if they were focused on more delicious products, you know, like the Arctic apple, which is this apple that's been engineered to take longer to brown. You know, that's going to be more delicious. You know, mm -hmm. the, so the, the flavor savory. Yeah, the nectarine. Remember, in, in the 1800s, in 18th century, sorry, we created the nectarine, which was a fusion of a peach and a plum. Mm -hmm. What other kinds of things can we create mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. this kind of imagination as we get this? And, and I think that could just totally change the debate as people mm -hmm. see it as a positive. Um, cool. That's what we'd like to, that's part of our vision. Yeah, that's yeah. very exciting. Yeah. So I guess the one last question I'd like to ask is, you obviously represent sort of, I don't want to say opposite sides of, of the GM kind of discussion, but mm -hmm. you know, big versus small business. Um, what are some goals that you might have in common? How can you work together? Um, so, so you know, one thing to think about Montana, we're a conglomerate of small companies. Okay. Right? So the Montana that's today that spun out of Pfizer in 2001 or 2002, um, it was put together by acquiring a bunch of small seed companies. And then they had this technology that they sort of put on top of that. And that's kind of where the current Monsanto comes from. So, so we don't, we're big partners with small companies. So we really believe in that a lot of the innovation, a lot of the great ideas, there's great ideas in Monsanto, but there's great ideas outside Monsanto. So working with small companies and partnering with small companies, we think is a perfect synergy for us and we love being able to do that so do you have any follow up to that or? <laughs> yeah I mean you know the, the thing that companies like Monsanto have is a knowledge of the regulatory process that someone like us is just never going to be able to do I, I think there is a, a potential future model you know if you look at the pharma industry that the sure. lot of small research done by the small companies and then it's taken to market right. and, and globalized you know we, right. we were just talking for us to create a GMO that could be taken around the world is just never going to happen. I mean, you were saying it's $150 right. million. Dollars. We know. But we can focus on just the U.S. market because that's right. enough for the return on our capital. You know, companies like Monsanto can globalize yeah. it. I mean, and, we, and, we, and we, as a, yeah. we as a brand, though, because yeah. we are building a consumer brand, have to be very careful with sure. partnerships like that. And I think if you look at the climate corporation, you know, there's, there's, you know, they got a lot of backlash from selling to Monsanto, and 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 so I think there's there's some nuances in that that have to be thought through. Um, you know, we we would not partner with Monsanto. I think at right the moment. out of the box. No, yeah. because it would just it would just affect our our, our consumer brand. Um, but but we got some great vegetable seeds. You might want to license from us if you're going to go after vegetable seeds. So. Well, we could do that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We are the world's largest vegetable seed company. <laughs> so. Okay. Anyways, there's lots of room. I think there's there's a lot of room on the shelf mm -hmm. for a lot of innovative products in agriculture. We got to use all the tools that are in the toolbox. Small companies, small innovative companies. Boy, if we could see 150 new ag startups mm -hmm. doing all kinds of interesting it's ideas and bringing new things, that that's fantastic, okay. right? So. I mean, one thing that could be what could be good would be you know Monsanto taking sponsorship over local DIY spaces mm -hmm. and supporting that because. You know, I, yeah, I believe, you, let's right? talk about it. Really good. I mean, I, I really believe that the future yeah. of this industry is, is small scale. Yeah. You know, if you, if you believe these exponentials, the, the cost of reading DNA, the cost of writing DNA, and the, and the robotics to actually do the plant transformations, those are incredible. You know, nothing in human history has fallen in prices, as price as fast as these. And, and big companies are not going to be fast enough to fully capitalize on these trends. So, you know, I think there's an amazing partnership that can happen with, with seeding this innovation at low level and, and you know, then these guys get the benefit. Or, or creating some global. opportunity, right? Creating the opportunity for your companies to, yeah. to get going and these ideas to, to work. So.
Well, great. A lot of great, great things to come. Thank you so much for thanks a lot, man, for coming out. I enjoyed it. Thanks, great man. discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Good to meet you, Anthony. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. We'll be all in right. touch. All right. We all live in the same neighborhood.